Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure and honor for me to be here, and I'd like to thank Prof. Shahab and the organizer for inviting me, and thanks for the kind introduction. Okay, the task I've been given is to talk about uh, the uh, new American guidelines for algorithm in health. Uh, uh, okay, no disclosure related to this presentation. What I'll try to talk about really, I'll, I'll go through the new classification definition and classifications of uh, Australian stages briefly. Then I will go through the American HEFREF algorithm, basically try to highlight uh, the change from 2017 and if the difference between them and the European if any. And I'll touch briefly at the end at, on the HEF MREF and HEF-DEF and the American algorithms. So I will not be talking about an acute heart failure or comorbidities or advanced heart failure. Okay, so the, uh, the definition of heart failure remains, as we know before, the syndrome of symptoms and signs of heart failure with underlying structural or functional abnormality. But the new thing that you have to have on top of these either an increase in natural urgent peptide or objective evidence of um, uh, congestion uh, uh, radiological or systematic. So that's the definition. The classification based on the ejection fraction is as we all know now, it's HEFREF, HEFREF and HEMREF, where HEMREF is mild use, not mid-range. The new class, as far as the uh, ejection fraction is concerned, is the heart failure with improved ejection fraction. And this is important. This is, we see a lot of patients that you HEFREF, you treat or whatever, and they improve. The ejection fraction becomes more than 40%. And why they made this class on its own, to emphasize the importance of continuing guideline that in those and those people. And we'll come to that in a minute later on. Now, as far as the stages, the stages, the all the stages are all, the A, B, C, D are all, but being revised to emphasize the importance of absence of, or presence of symptoms, one, and the progressive nature, and also to rename particular plus one, uh, stage one and A. So stage, stage A is the pre heart failure. So this is your patient who are at risk of heart failure. This we see always, the diabetic, the hypertensive, those with strong tummy history, cardiomyopathy, people exposed to cardiotoxic drugs. So these are pre-heart failure. And we'll come later on to say what the algorithm say about, about them. The stage B is the pre-heart failure. So not at risk, they are pre-heart failure. Those people, they are completely asymptomatic, but if you do the scan or echo, whatever, you find they have underlying structural function of normality. So they are when you read it, ready to go to heart failure, they are the pre heart failure. Obviously, patient can progress from one stage to the other, but you can present straight away even to the advanced, and do not this way. So the proper stage of heart failure is stage C. So these people either have or had or had symptoms and signs of heart failure. And these actually also being subdivided into more, I will come to that in a minute, but you, you have to remember that at least the two main groups Either they are persistent heart failure. So they are the one we see in our clinic, what you call um, NIHA 2 or 3 in our clinic, so those part of it, or those what they call heart failure in remission, so the symptom is gone, and maybe even the heart function has improved. But they are still stage C heart failure. Those may or may, may progress to, uh, as advanced heart failure, or patient can present directly to you with advanced heart failure. And those who are really struggling, they are on maximum therapy, keep coming in and out. They are usually considered for, uh, uh, you know, um, mechanical support, um, uh, transplant, or they are too bad, even valid care. And usually they are in tertiary center. Obviously, those patients in stage D, they can improve and go back to stage C. Now, the trajectory of class C, which is the important one, it could be, could be one of four. So you could either de novo, first presentation, heart failure, or could be those persistent that we talk about stay class, stay near two or three that we see all the time, or the symptom of gone. And these either, they may still have underlying structural abnormality, or even the structural abnormality may completely resolve, that we call the remission. The tachycardiomyopathy, the very bottom, very much, very part of cardiomyopathy, and those we see. And they are still heart failure. So we, cannot, we cannot just say they'll cure and go away. Uh, they still need to be seen, reviewed, and probably stay on treatment. And obviously, there, and now 
for the first time, the worsening heart failure group has been actually put in the guidelines, and which is group now, the one that we, we start, you see them for a while, stabilize and start getting worse, we have to increase their medication, have to give them whatever more diuretic, whatever new drugs are available, or they may need admission for uh, IV diuretic. So those are the worsening heart failure. So these are four actually all under the plus, plus C, and the worsening heart failure first time being identified in the guidelines as a group in there. We should never use the sta term stable heart failure. This is not a core stable heart failure. So over the last two or three decades, we've been very fortunate. There are so many trials that showed uh, benefit in mortality and morbidity in HEF rec patients, starting with the ACE and ARB, going to the beta blockers, going to the MRAs, and then you see the uh, large trial of the paradigm with the secretor for satan. So those been obviously guidelines have to try to follow this. And the 2016, 2017 guidelines, European and American, took those on board and put them in the guidelines. But they put them in that what you call sequential stepwise fashion that you, you see a patient, you give them beta blocker ACE inhibitors, you see them in two weeks' time, you saturate the dose, if they're worse, you can add whatever, change to army, add spinal electron, consider them for device, and process takes forever. Okay? And so what happened since those guidelines? We had drugs that came from nowhere. These are diabetes medications. Nobody in 2016 was even dreaming to consider them even for even plus whatever for heart failure. But they came out of the blue, two drugs, Emba and Bidaba. They are diabetes medications. We've been shown first if they reduce heart failure, then we tested for heart failure and they find they cure heart failure regardless of diabetes or no diabetes. Bidaba and the Emba reduce significant reduction. So from nowhere, it becomes plus 1A. And, and not only that, we learn that these drugs and others work very early. So really, the sooner you give them, the, you get the sooner you get the benefit very quickly within days. As Prof. Mitra mentioned before about the Enda. We also know, and we learn it more and more, that once patients get admitted, if you discharge them, a lot of them die within the first month. If you really don't start treatment while they're in, or see them very very quickly and put them on treatment, you're losing a lot of patients. We also know that the more of this guideline that you give to your patient, the better protection you give them. Uh, we also know that if you defer, if you start your patient, all of the, all the treatment is even before the SGL2 inhibitors and the R and whatever. So if you defer, if you give them the three other pillars early, okay, mortality, survival is good. But if you defer, so let's give the beta book in a month's time. Give the, they give the MRA in a month, two months' time. The, the delay is you do that, you lose the patients. You're guilty if you do that. We also know for a fact that they're not doing very well. The Chicham registry showed that, you know, 80% of patients either not on the guideline, the guideline that is the table, or they are, they're not on type of dose. So we're not doing a good job really. Therefore, guidelines, you know, keep, keep trying to, to chase and incorporate all these things, new guidelines, new recommendations, new observation. We have the European Society of Cardiology Guidelines 2021, and the American has just been released in May this year. So I'm going to go to the, over the American algorithm. So first, in the diagnostic pathway, which is very, very similar to the European that Mr. Mesha has uh, went through. Basically, you assess your patient, you expect heart, heart failure, you do simple things. You see, Two natural tetrapeptide. And these are abnormal. You, you refer them for echocardiography. If you don't have it, refer them to cardiologists. That's what you need to do with Simba, really. And then, based on that, for the HEFREP, you get injection fraction on this one of these groups. And then you've got the diagnosis, and you just need to find the etiology and start treatment. The European are very similar. So, what's the uh, American um, guidelines say about the algorithm regarding stage A and B? So, the stage A, uh, we will address. So at risk, you, you, you treat the risk. They are hypertension, you treat the hypertension. They are diabetic, high risk. As with the embaric trial, you have to give them a the GL2 inhibitor, even if you don't have heart failure. If they are, you know, suspect ischemia, you have to work, look into that, revascularize accordingly. If they are exposed to cardiac drugs, you have to talk to the oncologist, you have to do NDT meeting, and consider the need, change of the cardiotoxic, start early treatment, do the necessary investigations. If you have a very strong family history of, of cardiomyopathy, the first for unit testing. But the important thing now is class 2A recommendation that you should do if you suspect heart failure in your high risk, not heart failure, high risk 
do NT nitrate reportage. If you expect a failure, and then follow that pathway we said for diagnose, if these rays go for echo. So, so have a lot of pressure to do these things. If you expect a failure, most of your patients will tell you I'm fine, but they're not fine. If you ask them, can you climb stair, fly stair, they say I can't. That's, that's their stage two already. Um, so just do that. For class, uh, for stage B, obviously if they have structural, which is about half left now, reduced, then you put them on treatment. You don't have to wait for something. Okay, what about the class C? What the algorithm says about class C? Knowing all what we said before about the change from 2017 to now. Obviously, they put all these drugs, the four pillars, plus there is as needed, as stage one. What means that you put them all together as soon as you can, as safe to, to do so. Okay, no delay, not stepwise, start one and see them in three weeks' time or three months' time, whatever. Really, as soon as you can. Now, the, um, the um, American, as well as the European, give SEO2 and HEPA plus 1A recommendation, okay? But they're slightly different in the uh, recommendation regarding the Army. The American say Army plus 1A recommendation to use in reference to AC inhibitors in NIHA 2 to 3. And they say you use an AC inhibitors only if Army are not feasible or not tolerated or cannot be afforded by money wise. Um, the, uh, they kept the R as plus one A recommendation to be used when ACNFs are not tolerated. The European, just for comparison, also put all the four pillars start straight away as soon as possible. Um, as soon as they say to do so, they are no different there. And also they give DABA and NBA plus one A recommendation. However, they give the ARNI plus one B to be used instead of ACE. Uh, rather than actually as first line in, in reference to it. And they actually downgraded the R to class 1B recommendation. Now, going to, going, now, the American still steps, but the step one all goes, okay? The step two is the titration. They recommend that it's class 1A recommendation that you have to titrate these medications to the target dose as with the randomized control trial, okay? And class 2A is trying to do this quickly, like every one to two weeks, obviously depending on your blood pressure, patient symptoms, blood pressure, relapse, whatever. But your aim is to really see them every one to two weeks and titrate the dose. Don't wait for two years, because so the loss will die, then it's your fault. Now, as part of the step two, they highlight this issue of people with involved rejection fraction. So those are groups that you treat, or you don't treat sometimes, and the issue fashion gets better. Uh, and the recommendation basically, based on lots of whatever studies, observations, one of them is this uh, thread heart failure. Well, what, in thread heart failure, what they did, they took people who actually we see improved the fraction, no, no symptoms, and say, okay, let's split them. One group, we continue guideline direct therapy, and the other group, which gradually wean off and see what happens. And then they did crossover. They found when they did that, those with the wean off the guideline direct chemotherapy therapy, 44% relapse within six months, either by developing symptoms or how the ejection fraction gets worse or the nitrate that goes up. So don't do it. So it's class one recommendation now that you have to continue guideline direct chemotherapy for those with improved ejection fraction. Okay, so after that, the three to look for specific groups for the Black American plus one recommendation to consider uh, to add a uh, combination of hydrology isobar dynamic to on top of your RNA ACE inhibitors if they are still symptomatic. This is all shared the ICD recommendation plus one if your ejection fraction is less than 35% if your patient is likely to live more than one year. Not for class four. Class four actually, actually hospitalized with heart failure, don't give them ICD because they're going to die from bump failure. But anyway, that's it's all shared by the MX all. There's nothing new here. Uh, the CRTD recommendation, obviously, the classical one, your left band branch block, QRS more than 150 uh, milliseconds in class of 2, 3, or ambulatory class 4. Um, again, so for the African American, also, it's class 2B recommendation to uh, give isobar dinitrate and, 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 and hydrology in, for those who cannot be on ASOR of ARNI, mostly those with advanced kidney disease. Not with the EGFR of 50, you're talking about the EGFR of 
20th in there or the elephant. So, oops, don't know what's happening. Got one minute. Okay, okay, okay. So, for the ICD, uh, the Americans still say ischemic and non ischemic class 1A recommendation. The European they actually downgraded the ICD for non ischemic to class 2A based based on the uh, the um, Danish heart failure trial, which showed no mortality benefit in patients with non ischemic cardiomyopathy. Okay, other treatment then stays for Evabradin for heart, heart rate more than 70. Very squat based on the uh, Victoria trial for those with worsening heart failure, you have to escalate, escalate, escalate or get readmitted. The is still good for symptomatic uh, patient when you're struggling. Um, uh, uh, and certified fatty acids based on the old uh, GC trial. And the potassium binder, which now class 2B recommendation, because it helps you to keep patients on the ROS inhibitors when they have hypotheny, as been shown by the Diamond trial. For the hem, hef, uh, MREF, we know as Prof. Metra described you, this is the only trial that showed that uh, reduction in mortality and mobility in patients with uh, uh, preserved protection more than 40%. Do you want uh, more? Uh, yeah, just two seconds. Two seconds. Two seconds. Thirty seconds. <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> okay, I'm not from Baragon Bar 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 it can be helpful for those with just pressure fifteen percent um, in female, uh, and uh, but therefore uh, being given that the recommendation extended to be used for heart failure regardless of the ejection fraction, and the American guideline four for MREF, all the four classes, but just uh, all four drugs are popular, but the class recommendation is lower uh, for the HFMF, HFBF. Again, plus uh, GCO2 and HEP is class 2A. It's going to be class 1, by the way, because the liver is positive. It is class 1, not class 2A. And the RNA, MRA, and R class 2B, but not the beta blocker. And I think that's it. Now you can stop. Thank you very much. So